And final preparations are underway in Miami, where former President Donald Trump will be arraigned tomorrow in the Southern District of Florida. Federal charges, of course. Trump took off today from Newark, New Jersey, headed for South Florida. He's going to return to his golf club Tuesday night after the court appearance that's in New Jersey for a campaign fundraiser. Well, for more on this, we want to bring in our CBS News legal contributor and Loyola Law School professor, Jessica Levinson. All right, Jessica, over the weekend, we heard Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, talking about just how severe these charges were. Let's listen to what he said. I was shocked by the degree of sensitivity of these documents and how many there were, frankly. If even half of it is true, then he's toast. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a very detailed indictment, uh, and it's very, very damning. That was a phrase that resonated with many people as we look into just how serious these charges are. In your view, having reviewed that, uh, the indictment documents, how strong is the special counsel's case? This is a strong case, and I spoke to people over the weekend who are either current or former members of the Department of Justice, and they all basically said something very similar, interestingly, to what former, former Attorney General Bill Barr said, which is, if they can prove even half of this, they have a very, very strong case, only to mean that these are always difficult charges to prove, except if you look at this 49-page indictment, if the facts are true, this is incredibly damning. It's damning not just legally, but it's damning morally and ethically because if you look at the documents that the former president are alleged to have kept, not in secure locations, but in bathrooms, in ballrooms, it puts us all at risk. So it's both factually and legally a very strong case against the former president. Just, just to follow up, Tony, uh, you might allow me. One thing that I that I have heard from a lot of legal analysts over the weekend too is, look, his best uh, outcome would be for this to be dismissed because there's so much evidence in the case. Um, is that a possibility for the case to be dismissed? Is that likely? I don't think so. Um, I mean, I don't see a world in which this would just be dismissed and he would win before we move forward with this trial um, for the reason that you said, because there is simply so much evidence here. I think if I could pick up on your point of basically what his best defense is, if you look at the indictment, a lot of the most damning information appears to come from one of his attorneys. Mm -hmm. And typically, as you know, that type of information would be covered by attorney-client privilege. And it essentially means that communications that you have with your attorney, those can't be turned over to, in this case, uh, federal law enforcement. But what a federal judge found is that an exception to the attorney-client privilege, the crime fraud exception applies. And that's exactly what it sounds like, where you can't seek an attorney's, um, you can't seek an attorney's counsel for the purpose of committing a crime or fraud and then say, oh, but everything I said to that attorney, it's covered by the attorney-client privilege. So that's where I think the former president is going to be most aggressive in his defense, saying that crime fraud exception didn't apply so we don't get that information. So potentially that, that, that evidence would be thrown out. I am curious, uh, and you know the legal world a heck of a lot better than I do, how typical is it for an attorney to create these uh, records memorialize, I think is the fancy term for it, of interactions with a client so that they can, you know, show them in the event of a criminal trial like this? Well, I, I mean, none of this is typical in one sense. I mean, we're talking about the former president. We're talking about uh, finding an exception to this all-important privilege, the attorney-client privilege. But is it common that attorneys take notes and reduce things to writing or audio recordings, particularly if they feel that they might at some point need them? Yes. I mean, attorneys are trained, put it in writing or put it in audio recording if you feel you might mm -hmm in the future need that for your own protection or your client's protection. Fascinating. Uh, second second Trump case that involves somebody who used to represent him, as Maggie Haberman wrote. Jessica Levinson, thank you. Thank you.